Okay, um, thank you for the introduction. We're going to go into how uh, s some real life examples of how banks are using deep learning AI uh, to generate value, both for the banks and also the customers, looking at concrete examples. Um, I'm not going to say too much on this, but you can see deep learning is in the middle. You hear a lot about artificial intelligence. Um, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. It really works with statistical learning using and automating that. And deep learning, in turn, is a subset of machine learning. It's really been leading the revolution since 2012 in terms of a lot of the breakthroughs like autonomous um, driving and uh, computer vision that we're seeing in, in AI over the last decade. Examples of in, in areas like the US, China, the UK and elsewhere, where deep learning is being applied across the banking sector and insurance indeed, are shown here on this slide. And you can see that every single area of banking is being affected. Be it the retail banking side, whether you're looking at cybersecurity, or indeed in particular areas like risk management and automated credit. Um, being able to provide credit to the underbanked, being able to use data more efficiently to speed up the, the credit approval process for loans um, is one application. Payments. Payment with face has become very large in China, for example, and we'll look a bit more on that as something that's going to become more and more common going forwards. Wealth technology has been mentioned here today, and areas like robo-advisors, passive, um, replicating passive investment strategies, and automating uh, active uh, trading strategies for clients. Investment banking, sentiment analysis, risk, risk management, are all areas where deep learning is applied. And indeed, reg regulatory technology, RegTech. Um, as we know, regulation has been very big since the financial crisis, it's an area of, uh, where a lot of resources go. And automating Know Your Customer, for example, using deep learning computer vision to detect the face of a person from their passport or their driving license and automatically identifying them, speeding up that process. Insurance technology, automated credit approval, uh, uh, sorry, automated underwriting and indeed claims processing and indeed the healthcare sector, healthcare insurance will all be disrupted. Deep learning refers to neural networks with hidden layers. Neural networks were loosely inspired by the human brain. We won't go into too much detail on this, but it's really taken off since 2012, in particular when Google and Amazon and others got involved, and when they saw the breakthroughs that happened with um, the AlexNet team in ImageNet competition. Why do we bother with deep learning? What's so special about it? Well, this chart, which was created by the Stanford professor, Andrew Ng, uh, shows, Andrew Eng rather, how deep learning, as the data sets get larger, and we live in a world of big data, outperforms older traditional machine learning algorithms as that data set gets larger. The kind of examples out there are things like convolutional neural networks, which you can see on the left, it detects an image, here it's a car, and on the right-hand side, it's detecting probabilistically, is it a car, a truck, or a van, ascending a probability to it, so it's very probabil a probabilistic world that we're living in. These convolutional neural networks, known as CNNs, not to be confused with the American uh, TV channel, um, are very powerful for computer, uh, for computer vision. Here's an example. Um, it's detecting, you can see the bounding boxes around people, it's detected that it's a person. Another type that's used frequently is known as a recurrent neural network, an RNN, and the type known as long short-term memory units, LSTMs, are very powerful for uh, time series data and have an ability to forget and, um, and uh, learn what not to forget and remember on long-term memory. They're used, for example, with time series data like speech recognition, speech to text, and indeed market prediction models for forecasting stock markets. I won't say too much about GANs, generative adversarial networks. They became, they've become quite famous, for example, deep fakes, and indeed, uh, the face app, which shows what you look like when you, you, you get older, or might look like when you get older, the, the mobile app. But they used to generate synthetic data and again get used for predicting um, uh, uh, predictions for stock markets. Deep reinforcement learning uh, gets used um, by JP Morgan, for example. They have a tool called Loxim, and it's being used in equities trading. I'll skip this one because the previous speaker was talking a lot on uh, deep reinforcement learning. 
But again, here's a, a, a summary overview of the different areas or examples of where banks are using um, deep learning. So you can see credit analysis, sentiment analysis, generating financial uh, time series data, trading models, payments, regulatory technology, and in particular, the insurance sector is going to be disrupted all the way through. Chatbots, virtual assistants, machine translation, all linked to deep learning. And going forwards, we're going to see a massive disruption in this sector. As 5G uh, um, rolls out, it's not the same as going from 3G to 4G. With 4G, we saw the arrival of um, you know, more powerful apps. Um, the Instagrams of this world, et cetera, Facebook, et cetera, Uber. With 5G, it's a fundamental change, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And we're going to see technologies like augmented reality working like intended, combining with deep learning, computer vision, and creating um, a whole new interaction with the customer. Personalized services, virtual assistants, payment by face, and machine-to-machine -machine communication. So here's an example that we'll, we'll start to see in a couple of years from now. So 5G has already started to roll out, but we get to dedicated networks around um, 2022. The first iPhone 5G will be out in September next year. And because it's a lot faster than 4G, it removes latency issues that augmented reality and virtual reality have, and it enables autonomous systems, like autonomous robots and autonomous driving, to start working with machine learning, deep learning, actually on the device, not on a remote cloud server. So here we have this example of someone interacting customer with their mobile, going into the store, face detection, no need for plastic. Um, you can see the augmented reality showing the customer what a different color dress would look in her, using a face to pay for it, purchase it, get the loyalty cards, and then two-factor verification on the mobile, happy customer. We're talking about one millisecond latency near real time. Down from, significantly down from the 40 to 80 milliseconds latency that we have with 4G right now today. So it's going to be a very, very different world where devices will communicate with each other. You're going to have that invisible bank, frictionless banking, and the insurance sector in particular will be heavily hit as risk goes down. So if you're a traditional bank right now and still sitting there trying to think about your AI and deep learning strategy, well, the likes of Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and many others, and indeed in China, we're seeing the likes of Alipay, um, uh, Alibaba's company or subsidiary, um, WeChat, etc., really, really take a big lead in this area. And the disruption that will come in the next two years will fundamentally take it to a new level. An important thing when you look, work with deep learning or any type of machine learning is data is key. It's the fuel for, for um, uh, deep learning, for machine learning. Getting data right, getting it clean is really important. Solving the right problem. A lot of companies say, well, we tried deep learning, and then we spent a year working on the wrong problem. Because <laughs> you can easily lose one year with these complex techniques. And then you fall further behind your, your competitors. So making sure the data science team works closely with the, the front end, with the marketing team, with the finance team to solve the right problems. Making sure you've got data scientists who understand deep learning with the relevant skill sets and experience who will also use careful testing and integration to make it work. And also, looking forward, using your imagination, bringing teams like the marketing team to work with the, the data scientists and the deep learning experts to engineer new products that are going to work and transform the customer interaction. Your imagination is your limit. The kind of things that are anticipated between 5G and deep learning going forwards, like I said, are going to be virtual banks, uh, virtual bank manager, on your device that you can roll up, put on, uh, interact with augmented reality and give you advice on your stock portfolio, on your wealth management, um, it, on your pension portfolio, etc. This is the kind of world that we're going to within a, a, in a short time frame. It's also an engine for economic growth. I know there are a couple of politicians on their way, and we we'll always hear about AI and deep learning causing a huge amount of job losses. Whereas this um, forecast by Accenture, with 5G and AI going forwards, actually showed that the US can generate 3 million jobs over the next decade through these new technologies. And they're showing the kind of GDP growth that small town like Saratoga going up to 14 billion for a large city like Chicago. There's no reason why this shouldn't be the same in France and across the EU. PwC have estimated that AI technologies by 2030 could actually generate 
38 million new jobs whilst we're helping fight against climate change. So it is actually an economic growth engine if we use it correctly and we use it with vision. And that's going to be the key challenge going forwards, that we, we understand this tool, look at the opportunities to transform the entire banking experience, generate value through the entire um, value chain, and also change the customer interaction going forwards. And as I'm out of time, sorry, <laughs> there's not a lot of time to really talk about the, the, this whole subject in, in the depth that, that, that I'd like to, but I will be around afterwards if anyone has any questions. But again, the thing is, this is a very powerful tool. It is transforming the customer interaction. Google, Amazon, Facebook all use this technology. The large Chinese players like Alibaba, Alipay are using this technology to transform the finance sector already in different ways and the customer experience. If the banks don't catch on to this, they're going to become like the slide rule manufacturers did when Calculator came out, redundant overnight. Mm -hmm.